Today we are going to be talking about the new O3 FPV system and specifically goggles compatibility. In this video I'm going to walk you through what the situation is with what goggles work, what don't, what features work and don't, and also cover the subject of the FPV WTF hacks with regards to the new firmware that is needed to use these as well. Now if you find this video interesting please do let me know what you think in the comment section, please do make sure you are subscribed and if you'd like to support the channel please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon. I want to say a massive thank you from me to my Patreons as I would not be able to make content Content on this channel without their support. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what the situation is with all of these different DJI goggles. So to start, we will go with these, the DJI FPV goggles version 1s. These released with the original FPV system from DJI and sadly these are not compatible with the new O3 FPV system. There is actually a somewhat technical limitation to that, however I do think DJI could bring compatibility and I'll explain that why a little bit later, however right now they can't because these goggles do not support dual band. The original FPV system only worked on 5 gigahertz, the remote and the telemetry and video was all on the same frequency. O3 on the other hand, whilst transmits video on 5 gigahertz, it can use both 5 gigs and 2.4 gigs for the RC link and telemetry and as a result of that these goggles are not compatible. That then leaves us with these, the new goggles 2 as well as the FPV goggles V2. Both of these goggles support dual band and the basics are they are both compatible with the new O3 system. The goggles 2 are very much designed to be used with it, originally releasing with the Avata, but are fully compatible with the new O3 system in every way. They offer a 1080p live feed, you've got low latency mode at 100 frames a second, around 30 milliseconds, and all of the functionality that works on those new ear units works on these goggles, allowing you to record up to 4K 100 frames a second, 2.7K 100 frames a second, or 1080 p 100 frames a second. The goggles too also allow you to do something everyone's been shouting about for quite some time and that is to record what you see on the goggles image on the DVR. The goggles too record the exact image you see through the goggles if you want, meaning you will get the ability to record your full MSP display port OSD on the goggles DVR, giving you a backup should something go wrong or giving you the ability to look back at the data that your OSD was showing you. Whilst the goggles 2 are fully compatible, the goggles version 2 that originally launched with the FPV drone a couple of years ago are also compatible as well, but there is some things you need to be aware of. First of all, you will need to update them to a new firmware version which is version 01.04.0000. That firmware gives full compatibility with the O3 system, but there are some differences in the way the O3 system performs depending on which set of goggles you use. For instance, when you're using O3 with the V2 goggles, rather than having recording limited to 100 frames a second, you can actually record up to 120 frames a second in 4K, 2.7K and 1080p. As a result of this, it means the latency with the goggles V2 on O3 in low latency mode is actually a little lower at roughly 28 milliseconds. That's because the goggles 2 are limited to 100 frames a second or 100 hertz displays, whereas these goggles supply 120 frames a second or 144 hertz displays. Whilst you do get a little less latency, you also though get a little less resolution, whereas the goggles 2 will give you a 1080p live feed, the goggles V2 are limited to 810p like we've seen on the previous systems, but I'll be honest with you, there isn't a great deal between them when you look at it. Overall there are some other little minor differences and the other big one to mention is the fact that whilst the goggles too can record that as you view image on the DVR, sadly the V2 goggles can't. These record a clean video image on the DVR just like they did before and can also record the subtitles file as well, but unfortunately the V2s cannot record that full image like we can see on these. Overall the experience though is very similar between the goggles, whilst you do have differences in how you control the menus, the look and feel is pretty much the same, whereas on the goggles version 2 you're using a joystick, on the goggles 2 you're using the touchpad, but overall 
Everything is there apart from those little things that I've just mentioned. Now, with regards to antennas on these two goggles, everything is pretty much the same, but there is something interesting that you need to be aware of. As I've said, the O3 system is a dual band system. It transmits video on 5 gigahertz only, but it is capable of transmitting goggles telemetry and remote control telemetry back to the ear unit on both 2.4 gigs or 5 gigahertz. As a result of that, the O3 system is only compatible with the new grey FPV remote version 2 and the original black remote that we saw with the original FPV system sadly is only compatible with the original V1 system. There is also though an interesting quirk with regards to antennas because whilst you would expect to need to use dual band antennas on the O3 system, in my testing it actually depends on what control link you're using. If you're using your own control link, you could actually get away with using 5 gigahertz antennas only because in my tests on my spectrum analyzer and I will be producing a video on this in the very near future the O3 system only goes on to 2.4 gigahertz if there is a DJI remote control in the system if you're not using the DJI remote and you're only using the goggles the system always sticks to 5 gigahertz no matter how much interference you put on the band and this means that you could actually stick to using 5 gigs antennas on the V2 goggles or even the goggles too if you're using your own dedicated remote link such as Express LRS or Crossfire. Now with regards to the image quality and the RF performance, overall I have to say there isn't that much between them. Whilst the goggles 2 obviously offer 1080p live feed OLED displays, the V2s give you that 810p image, good screens and the overall image quality is very good. In fact, the thing to understand with O3 is much of the improvements are not just in the goggles. Most of it isn't even resolution. It's the improvement with how it handles low signal, the compression behavior, and the overall improvements to the RF system just makes it look better on both these goggles. And whilst the V2s don't look quite as good as the goggles too, it isn't dramatic and I would not be running out to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on these if you have a set of these already. I would certainly be trying them before you do it. With regards to the RF performance, overall in my testing so far it's very similar. It's a very subjective and hard thing to test but there certainly isn't anything dramatic in it and actually any differences you may find could probably be made up with better antennas on the V2 because they are much easier to modify compared to the goggles too. Now the final big question I want to talk about is with regards to the V2s and the root hacks and can that be used with the new firmware that you need for O3 and the answer to that is yes however you need to make sure you have rooted the goggles before updating. The situation is basically the same here as it was with the 0015 firmware. If you root before upgrading you will still have all of that FPV.WTF OS functionality with the new firmware however if you are on the new firmware you will not be able to root. So it is very important that you root the goggles before doing the update. If you're someone who is already using the root hacks with that custom OSD on the ear units you should be fine to update the V2s as long as the root has been done beforehand. This really does make the V2s very very compelling overall and right now I'll be honest I think they're probably the best option overall today and I would certainly say try the V2s with the O3 system before running out and getting the goggles too. I'm not saying the goggles too aren't good but they do have their problems. The fitment isn't great. They do fog easily and for me the touchpad is a bit of a pain but that's being improved as we move forward with them moving back to using a joystick. So that is overall the situation with goggles on O3 today at the point of me making this video. Now I said at the start there is something interesting with regards to the V1s and compatibility and that was what I talked about earlier when using the O3 system without the DJI remote and the fact that it does seem to stick on 5 gigahertz only. Based on this I don't see a reason personally why DJI couldn't bring a 5 gigs mode only 
for the O3 system to the Goggles V1. It would obviously take some development, but technically I don't see any reason why that couldn't be done. However, I wouldn't hold your breath. It's extremely unlikely to happen. And for now at least, it's going to be Goggles version 2 or the new Goggles 2. So hopefully that has answered many of the questions you may have with regards to goggles on the new O3 system. I will have released a number of videos alongside this on the O3 system, including a teardown. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do check out the other videos on my channel. Furthermore, if you find this video interesting, please do give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comment section if you have any questions. And finally, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons once again. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. And if you think I've earned your support today, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.